Writing Equations and Representing Solutions, Part 1. The first thing we need to talk about before we even get into writing equations is what some keywords are that indicate each operation. So we have a table here, and I've gone ahead and filled in some of the keywords that I have thought of that indicate the different operations. What I want you to do is go ahead and fill this out on your note sheet, but if you think of any other words that indicate addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, add them to those boxes and share those in class. Now that we know what words indicate each operation, we can write equations to represent constraints or conditions within real-world problems. An example would be an apple and a cup of juice are 220 calories. An apple has 100 calories. How many calories does a cup of juice have? Using our nosy, let's go ahead and highlight the question. And then any other important information. So the question says, how many calories does a cup of juice have? And that tells us right away that our unknown is how many calories are in a cup of juice. Just like with writing algebraic expressions, the first step in writing an equation is to rephrase the problem with only the most important words. So we can cut out all the fluff and just write the very most basic important things. Okay, we need to know that apple and juice equal 220 calories. Those are the, the most basic parts of that problem. Now, like we said, when we were looking at the problem, we said, well, the question tells us what the unknown is. The unknown is the number of calories in juice. And for the unknown, that's where the variable comes in. The variable is that letter we use to represent an unknown value. So our variable is going to represent the calories in juice. And so I chose J to represent the number of calories in the juice right here. So now we can start writing the equation, and we look back to the original problem. It says an apple and juice equals 220 calories. Well, if I look back in the problem, an apple was 100 calories, so where apple was, we can plug in 100, and indicates addition, and then of course juice, we said that's our unknown, so we're going to use J to represent the calories in juice. That will equal a total of 220 calories. So we have just written our equation. Let's try another one. Bike World sells three less brands of bikes than Cycle City. Bike World sells 12 brands of bikes. How many brands of bikes does Cycle City sell? So the first thing I did was highlight the question, and then I went back through and I highlighted with different colors the different parts of the problem, and that will personally help me to separate the information so I can write the words, define a variable, and come up with an equation. So let's look at what the problem is telling us. It says Bike World sells three less brands than Cycle City. So that means Cycle City sells three more brands than Bike World. So it's going to be Cycle City minus three, right? Because that's going to tell us how many Bike World is. And then it says Bike World sells 12 brands, so we do know that. And then how many brands of bikes does Cycle City sell? That's our unknown. And so that's what we're going to need to use to represent a variable. But we can't jump ahead to the variable yet. First, we have to just write the most important words from the problem to help us come up with our equation. So I'm going to abbreviate. I'm going to say CC for Cycle City brands minus 3 equals BW for Bike World brands. Okay, well, we do know how many brands Bike World sells, that's 12. We do not know how many brands Cycle City sells, so that's our unknown. We need to come up with a variable, and I think C would be the best variable for the number of brands at Cycle City. So, 
If the number of brands at Cycle City is our unknown and we're using C to represent that, we can say C minus 3 equals the number of Bike World brands. And if we look in the problem, we're told that that is 12. So our equation is C minus 3 equals 12. Five tickets to the Spurs game cost $125. How much does one ticket cost? Well, I know that five tickets are going to cost $125. I do not know how much one ticket costs. That is our unknown, so that's what the variable will need to be. We need to rephrase this using only the most important words, and those words would be five tickets. equals $125. We said our unknown was how much one ticket cost. Let's let T represent ticket. And now I would like for you to try to come up with the equation on your own. Go ahead and press pause and then we will check when you press play. So the equation is 5t equals 125. Remember that 5t is the same thing as 5 times t, so that's saying that 5 times t equals 125. And if we wanted to find out how much one ticket cost, then we could divide each side by 5 to see what 1t would equal. But right now, we're just worrying about this right here. 5t equals 125. Now problem number three is all about tater tots, which is awesome. So I want you to solve this tater tot problem on your own, and remember, I just want you to do your very best. This is the first time you're trying this, so if you get it wrong, that's okay, we'll fix it in class. The important thing is that you give it your best shot. So do your very best work on this one, and we will check it in class during our WISC chat.